Good evening and welcome to Streams of Light, a ministry of the Berean SDA Church in South Bend, Indiana. Tonight's message is entitled, How Does Jesus Look at Baptism? by Pastor J.D. Miller. Stay tuned at the end of our program for more information about the Brain SDA Church and how you can help us be a blessing to the Michiana area. And may the words I speak be clear. May we leave this place not just with more understanding, but filled with the Holy Ghost, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The text that was read for you today, um, it's what we'll be looking at. Basically, this will be our text for tonight. Um, the question of mine is, has been, how does Jesus look at baptism? How does Jesus look at baptism? It's easy to go from um, one text to the next and, and highlight exactly what baptism is. We know that baptism is not a sprinkling. It has to be a death. A death to self. A death to our old life. A death to our old ways. And a death to our, our old world. But not only that, it is life to new self in Jesus, it is life eternal, and it is life beyond this world. We look at our text, and it is found in John 3. John 3 tells us about a man who decides to come to Jesus at night. This man is none other than the rabbi Nicodemus who found it necessary to, to face Jesus not in the daytime, not when his friends and his colleagues can see him going to this street philosopher, but at a time when all should be asleep. A time when kerosene oil lamp dances over your face that it distorts it so much that they can't really tell if that's really you. And so this man, Nicodemus, decided to face Jesus under the cloak of night. Nicodemus is no ordinary man. Nicodemus is an educated man. He holds under his belt many degrees. He's one of those guys that you would see walking and you have to say, doctor, doctor. Nicodemus is one of the teachers of the law. He's one of those guys that you would see graduating from those elite schools of the prophets and ended up in a great job. And now he is ruling over the people. He now becomes the one that keeps the law and upholds the law and makes sure that you're keeping the law and making sure that you're upholding the law. But here he is in the shadow of darkness, coming to Jesus, cloaked by night, and now he comes presenting himself with a statement slash question. His statement is also cloaked. He comes saying to Jesus, we know that you are a, a, a and from God. We know that you were sent by God because no one who is, if, if, if you're not from God, you, you could not be doing these great miracles. And he looks Jesus square in the eye, waiting for an answer. And Jesus recognized 
realize that this man, Nicodemus, is not really asking the question that he really wants to ask. Nicodemus' question, if you really look at this text, seems to be saying, you're preaching a gospel that we don't understand. It, it makes sense, but I'm not sure that I'm getting it. And I, I want you talking about this kingdom. And I want to understand. That's what his heart said. But his mouth said something else. It's funny when it's time for us to pray. We oftentimes come to Jesus. If we want a car, we present ourselves, Oh Lord, most high, thou exalted one. I pray for this and I pray for that. And you never get the issue at heart. And so Nicodemus, like us, doesn't quite come out with what he really wants to say. How do I attain this? How do I become a part of your kingdom, this kingdom of God that you speak so eloquently about? And so Jesus recognized this and, and tells him, Nicodemus, forget the, the flatteries. Forget the facade. Forget the fact that you are a great man for just a moment. And, and really, tell me what you want. But in fact, don't even bother to tell me what you really want to say. Let me answer the question that you have at heart. And Jesus says to him, You must be born again. You must be born again. Those words, if you don't understand the, 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 the fact that you cannot be born again, is, well, if you do understand the fact that we cannot be born again, I'm up in age now, I'm not too old. But neither am I too young. But I know, and I'm not too smart, but I do know that there is no way that I can be born again. And so Nicodemus asked the question, how, master, rabbi, teacher, how can an old man like me, after going through the schools of the prophets, of after being taught by all my professors, after having this knowledge, after being a great teacher, how can I, why should I be born again? After all, I've attained all that I, I need to attain, and I can teach you a few things, but right now I want to know the answer to the, the question that I'm asking that you're answering. How can I be born again? The idea is this, that you really can't go back into your mother's womb. You really can't go back where you came from. But the fact is, Jesus is saying that you must die. You must die. I remember seeing my little boy being born. It was one of the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I really don't understand the, 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 the biology and the, the, the chemical mixture that took place, but I know that that boy is mine. I know that because of my wife and myself, and I look at that boy and I, and I, I know that if I see him anywhere else, if, if, I, if I did not see him right after he was born, I, and I went to that little ward where they have all the babies, I can recognize this baby. But when he came out, for a moment, there was a pause. And then he took a deep breath. 
And then that was the last time I got rest. He's been crying ever since. It was as if God blew breath into his little nostril and said, Now you live. Now you have life. Now you are really, we've always been wondering when we, when my wife was pregnant, we always asked the question, what will he look like? And we were eager, we were always eager to see how, what he would look, to want, want to know what he would look like. We always wanted to know what, if you would have my, my lips, if you would have my, my, well, my, the shape of my head. Uh, if he would have my complexion, and you know, and, and I would hope that he didn't have my toes, and have my wife toes, but then he ended up with my wife toes, and I wish he had my toes. But you know, we always we went through this. We wanted to know what this little man with little boy would look like, and how he would act, and what would be his life. What did God have for him? When he came out, he was wet, fully immersed in the womb. The Bible tells us, and it gives us an example of what baptism is all about. Baptism, it says in Acts 8, 36, 37, and 38. I won't read it, you just look at it. Philip meets this man along the road looking at the book of Isaiah. And for some reason, he was not understanding what was taking place. And, and Philip got the, the spirit of the Holy Ghost and ran beside that chariot and asked him, can I help you with that translation of yours? Can I help you understand what you're reading? And he says, yes, help me understand, for I do not understand what I'm reading. And he breaks it down to him. And, 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 and the, the eunuch says, listen, now that I understand, I must be baptized. And they looked for water, water deep enough to step into and be fully immersed, fully covered. In essence, what Jesus, Jesus was saying to Nicodemus is this, in order for you to live, in order for you to understand the laws that you're teaching, in order for you to be a, a follower, in order for you to understand the kingdom of God, you must die to yourself. In order for you to step out and live a true life of Christianity, in order for you to step out and live a, a true life of a God-sent person, you must die to self. It's, it's, it's a hard teaching because most of us do not want to die to self. We love the life that we're living. We love the fact that we are educated. We are the, the big men, or the big dogs. We are the, the elite. We don't want to let go of that. But if the truth be told, if we live the life that we're living now, we will not. Be happy. We are not happy. If you ask the person that's walking on the street today, are you happy? If they really are honest with you, if they have no, no relationship with God, they are not happy. They have the education. They have the, 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 not, the book knowledge. They have the money. They have all the things, the big cars and everything that they want, the house and everything they, they want. But what they need more than anything else, they do not have. Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Being birth is something phenomenal. You have no control over it. Being born is something that we have to just allow to take place. When little Jaden, my little son, was being born, 
He wasn't saying, I'm not ready, I'm not coming now. When the force of nature pushed down on my wife, she said, he's coming. Ready or not, he's coming. I remember her as she was in labor for 27 hours. It was a painful experience. But I remember her smile after that baby came. And so, baptism is a death, but it's also a resurrection. Baptism is a death to old life, but it's also a resurrection to new life. We, I look at this sanctuary and, and I see how beautiful it is, new carpets and, and everything in here are just it's just beautiful in here. And in order for this to take place, they, they had to root up the old carpet and, and gut everything and, and take everything out and put new things back in. They had to remake or rather to, to um, do, reconstruct the place, this place, and make it beautiful. They added to it. But Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, no, I do not want to add to you. I'm not trying to place more things on you. I'm not trying to beautify you. I'm trying to take away everything you have, everything that you are, and give you a new start. Give you a brand new start. You are now a baby in my sight. That's basically what Jesus is saying. In order for you to understand the kingdom of God, in order for you to be Part of the kingdom of God, you have to be a brand new baby. You have to leave your life of, 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 of a game behind. You have to leave your life of selfishness behind. You have to leave your, your life of the elite behind and, and live a life of simplicity. Live a life that says, I am totally committed to Jesus Christ. Then the next thing that Jesus says to Nicodemus is this. Make sure I can read this thing. Okay. He says, Jesus says, I'm sorry. He said, that which is born of, this, of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said this to you. You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The wind bloweth where it wishes. Often we try to tell people that when you're baptized, this is the way you act now. We tell them that now that you are, you found Jesus, now that you have found the new life, you can't do this anymore. You can't do that anymore. You, 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 you have to live a life, a brand new... You, you are now perfect. You no longer sin. We, we, we tell them that this is the, the brand... This is your day of beginning. And there is truth in that. This is your day of beginning. But how can you tell a person who's struggling, struggling all of his life with a certain habit that when you get baptized, it stops? No, the struggling begins. This is what struggling begins. The wind bloweth with wishes means that when you are now baptized in Christ, the Holy Spirit will transform you as he sees fit. It is not your choice what you will change. It is the Holy Spirit's choice when you will change. It is not your choice when you will be um, uh, uh, 
the, the, the top of the notch Christi Christian. It is God, the uh, Holy Spirit, walking with you and talking with you and letting you know, no, not this, but this. Don't go here, but come here. Walk with me here and leave that alone. You're growing in the Spirit. You have to, you've got to understand that death and light, when, when you die to old self, it does not mean that you, you're completely, you forget all your ways. What it means is this, that you have a new goal in life. You've turned from your old ways and say, no more, I want to go this way. And every time you fall, it doesn't mean that you have to be baptized again. It means that you can call on your Savior, your Lord, your Jesus Christ. When you, fall, when, when you get baptized, it does not mean that you will be perfect. What, that, what it means is that the Holy Spirit will continue to work with you. What it means is that the Holy Spirit will never leave you or forsake you. When you're messing up in life and you know that this is not the way I want to go, and you say, Lord, please help me. He's willing to come to your rescue right away. So Jesus used those elements in nature for, you, for, for us to understand what baptism is all about. Some of us believe that when we are baptized that everything will be good. Some of us believe that when we get baptized that the, the devil leaves us alone because we're not holy. We're saved. We're sanctified. We're Holy Ghost filled. Because if we've been water baptized and because we've found this new life, we believe that we're safe. But when you read Matthew 4, you realize that after Jesus was baptized in Matthew 3, that it was then that the devil took him up and tempted him for 40 days. That was one of his hardest struggles. The fact of the matter is this, that when you get baptized, the devil will ride your back. But you have backup. When you get baptized, when you put yourself down in the watery grave and, and get back up, the Holy Spirit will come down on you like a dove. You may not see him, but he represents the... He's represent, standing for you and saying, I got your back. When you feel like you're going down, call on me, reach up, and I'll be right there for you. The fact is that we don't call on the, the, the Lord enough. We don't pray enough. We don't tell him what we want enough. And so we suffer because of this. Nicodemus a teacher of the law who's been a Pharisee, a lawgiver for so long, did not understand this. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much degrees you have behind your name. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter how many D's you have on your transcript or on your report cards. The fact is that God says, I want you. I want you. Just as you are. You know, we always say, come as you are, and the Lord will... You know, don't stay as you are. That's kind of faulty. You can't come as you are and don't stay. Come as you are and let the Lord work on you from where you are. Give God a chance to work on you. The, the fact of the matter is this, that we fail a lot because we're trying to work on self. We have this self-start attitude. We have this, this, this what, what is it called? Self-esteem. But we, 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 we are so caught up in our, ourselves that God is saying, come my son, come my daughter, let me work on you. Let me give you a brand new start. 
Let me walk you the way, the rest of the way. When you are down on your last dime, when you are down in your luck, let me be your luck. Let me be your blessing. Let me be your salvation. Let me stand in your stead. But we're so caught up. We're so caught up in ourselves. And this is why Christ is saying that you must be born again. One of the stories told in, in Genesis is about Noah. When you read the story of Noah in Genesis 6, 7, and 8, you realize there that God was displeased with the fact that the world turned its back on him. And it pained God. And God looked over the world and, and found one man that was worthy enough. And Noah, the Bible says, found grace in the eyes of God. And God blessed him by saving his life and his family's life. Life, lives. Noah watched on that ark as the old world passed away from him. And when the ship, that ark, landed once again on dry ground, the world as he knew it was no more. A brand new start. First Peter 3, 20 and 21 tells us that this was their baptism. Moving away from the old world to the new world beyond this world. When we are baptized, when we are baptized, it's a movement from the old world. Thank you for tuning in to Streams of Light, the ministry of the Berean SDA Church in South Bend, Indiana. We pray that you are blessed by the program and that you'll tune in next week for another episode of Streams of Light. We'd like to encourage you to support Streams of Light TV ministry with a love gift of any amount. Donations can be sent to Berean SDA Church, 601 West Colfax Avenue, South Bend, Indiana. 46601. Please be sure to put streams of light in the remarks section of your check or money order. As always, we'd like to invite you out to our worship service each Saturday morning at 11 a.m. and our prayer, power, and praise service each Wednesday beginning at 645. Again, thank you for tuning in to Streams of Light. God bless and good night.